On today's episode, we talk about the notification addiction, art that lasts a long time, and I reveal a little bit more about my love for dubstep. Let it rain. Hey everybody and welcome to Finish Friday, the show that helps more creative people change more lives. I'm your host Todd B from Tennessee and I created this show because on a scale of one to not looking at Terry Crews' pecs when he's on screen, creating stuff is hard and finishing those things is even harder. Man, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling good. I have the bandage off my hand, fingers feeling a lot better. What else is going on? dug this book out of my garage, so that's pretty exciting. But other than that, not much, so let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is around art that lasts a long time. And listen, I got to thinking about this. It wasn't like, it was pretty casual the way it all happened because I saw that Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events is, is coming back around on Netflix for its own series. And, and it just seems so bizarre to me because I remembered, I, I thought back and I remembered reading those books like in middle school, in high school, and I'm like, those things had to be written a long time ago. How are they still around? I did some research, right, and those books were written in 1999, which means that 18 years later, here we are, still watching the idea of one person. I just want you to think about that for a second because in this world of immediate, you gotta have everything right now, right? The blog posts fly basses at 100 miles an hour. You still have work that is created and it lasts and it lasts and it lasts. Like you guys, I know it's hard. It's hard to write a novel. It's hard to write a song. It's hard to get really good at what you do and have anyone care about that art for even half a second. But I gotta encourage you in this. It's not even a challenge. It's just a reminder that the best art lasts a long time. Art only stops lasting when it is not emotionally affecting people. Did you hear that? I wanna say that again. Art only goes away, art only stops lasting when it stops emotionally affecting people. Business problems change all the time, right? You got different businesses with different money issues and a different landscape and a different marketing, but emotions stay the same across humanity. Of course, we're all triggered by different things, right? We, we all have different emotions to different things, but for the most part, we all feel the same basic emotions, anger, sadness, joy, love, and that's what art triggers in us. And that's what you do that's different than everything else in the world, right? Like I, I, don't, I don't often drive by a bridge and get emotionally moved, but I still get goosebumps when I hear Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. That's just the way it works. That's the field that you are in. And so go through that pain because I know it's hard right now. I know it's a lot of work to pull that art out of you. But if you do it right, it lasts a long time. And with that, let's get into today's question of the week. Today's question of the day is sponsored by The Creative's Curse audiobook. Now that's my book and always it's the sponsor to this show until I land the next one. I'm still in talks. I, I want to put, so the thing is, I, I want to put the right people in front of you. Like I, I'm not, we've been over this before. I'm not grabbing money on this show. I'm looking for something that you guys would actually like and, and, and like to see and like to listen to and benefit from. And so while I'm still auditing that process, I know you can benefit from my book, which is why I talk about it every week as the sponsor to the question of the week. Today's question of the week comes from Kara Wolf on Twitter. Kara, man, I, I love you so much. You're amazing. Always holding it down on Twitter. You're the best. Finish Friday question. How did you break the habit of notification slavery? Okay, so for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, Last week, I wrote a post called The Most Overrated Pleasure, and it talks about not, not cell phones specifically, but just the notification and just how it's evolved throughout the years, right? So we had the doorbell, and initially, that was a notification that signaled human interaction, and then it evolves to, okay, bing, you have an email in the middle of the night. Okay, bing, you have a new tweet. Okay, bing, you are significant, and, and we're really like tying our worth and tying our significance 
to these notifications. And, and it's just something I talk about because I struggle with it as an artist. You're always looking for kind of that validation, right? It, it, it's hard to get approval and, and on my weekdays, that's where I'll dive right into the notifications. I overcame that for the most part um, by turning them all off, all of them. All of them. My phone, I'm trying to think if my phone has any, the calendar is my only push notification that's on my phone. Um, other than that, no Twitter, no Facebook, no Quora, no Medium, no no notifications whatsoever. I, I can't go down that rabbit hole, right? Because as soon as I do, I'm giving my time to someone else. We talked about trying to make art that lasts for a lifetime. Whenever you do that, it requires you to go into yourself, right? And, and, and have that focus and have that vision on something for a very long time. And quite frankly, uh, Facebook is not a part of that. Twitter is not a part of that. I, I, I love my, I don't answer the phone. I mean, you guys who, who are really reading all my stuff, you know, I, I answer the phone for like four people, maybe. My text messages do not make a sound. My phone ringer does not make a sound unless it's from the people that I want to hear from. And my, my, it's definitely not my email. Are you kidding me? People, okay, I'll, I'll resist this side rant, but we treat email like it's a job and it's not a job. If you are an artist, especially if you have a blog, you're, you're trying to start your own thing, it's easy to get pulled into that email because you think, oh, this email could, could make me, this email could land me a bunch of money. But the deal is you gotta turn that off and get back into creating the art. So the simplest way for me, Cara, and everybody who's watching this right now, to avoid that grab of focus is simply to turn them all off. And finally, let's get into this week's Artist Spotlight. This week's Artist Spotlight goes directly on Zed, the German DJ who came to America and, and really just blew up, man. It, he So early, before 2012. So Zed is the one, if you don't know, he has a song that's like, If I love is tragedy, why are you my clarity? Which is like one of my favorite songs of all time. I sing it every chance I get, obviously. And, and I've probably listened to, actually, more than any other pop song, I've listened to Clarity by Zed. But my man started, again, we're seeing the pattern, right? He starts with his music. He's on YouTube before anyone knows who he is. He's creating song after song after song after song. He's creating beats. He's remixing Skrillex songs. He's making Justin Bieber song remixes, right? He, he's making Zelda. That's how I found him. He made a Zelda song. I was really into Legend of Zelda back in the day. He made a Zelda mix, got some attention, got some attention, got some attention. And then all of a sudden, he blows up, right, when he hooks up with, with some of these major artists and now he's worked with Selena Gomez and he's worked with Troy Sivan and he's worked with Haley Williams from Paramore. And so for me, again, guys, th this is not rocket science. It's just more, I lay these out in front of you because I want you to know what's possible. He started, he dove into his art, and then his career found him. It's not a coincidence that that happens with all of these people because the deeper you go into your art, the more chance you get to activate that talent and the more you get around people who love what you do and the more you get around people who do what you do so that you can make truly incredible stuff. Man, anytime I get to talk about Zed, it is a good day. Anytime I get to talk about like dubstep, I'm a huge chill step fan. I've never talked about that before, but that's when I'm writing it, that's pretty much what I'm listening to. I might link, I'll link my favorite playlist down below um, so you guys can go check it out. All right, ask the audience the last segment of this show. You guys, thank you so much for being here every week. It's just, again, growing and growing. By the time this releases on Friday, I, I'd be willing to bet that I have over 500 subscribers. The, the growth has been that consistent, so thank you for that. My question of the week is, or my ask the audience is, what is your favorite book? Like I said, I dug Charlotte's Web out of the garage. It got me thinking, uh, you know, books that have kind of changed my life. You see, uh, well, you might see Ramona the Pest down here, Ramona, age eight, all of those. All those books I read as a kid that really changed how I thought about art. So that's what I want to know from you this week. Put it down in the comments, your favorite book. 
And I guess that's it. That's it. I'll see you next week. Again, I'm Todd B. from Tennessee, and I will talk with you soon.